H&M is the official partner for season two of the Fashion and Color podcast, partnering with Harlem's Fashion Row for two years in a row for our Sustainability Summit. H&M is revolutionizing fashion by turning recycled materials into breathtaking, eco-conscious collections, such as Heron Preston, to reshape the fashion landscape through collaborative efforts like the H2 Collection. They are not just crafting clothes, they are crafting the future of fashion. Y'all, I am so excited about this episode because I am here with Casey Icon Billingsley. And I have to tell you, before we even started recording this, we had a good old country time because he's from Alabama and I'm from Memphis. And I feel like I just met a kindred spirit. Casey has styled some of the most iconic figures in fashion. A couple years ago, styled the September cover of The Cut. And he continues to push the bar, not only with his client style, but with his style as well. Let's talk about <laughs> Motherland Drip, um, that I just absolutely love. Welcome, Casey. Hi, uh, Brandis. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. I'm so happy to be here. God I mean, knows. can I just tell you, like, mm -hmm. first of all, I felt like I had already met you before. Right. Where'd that come from? That, it's a Southern thing. <laughs> I think that that warmness that just comes from us Southerners, it, yeah. we, we know our lights. Yeah, so yeah. I get it all the time, but I, I felt that with you too. I'm like, Do I, mm, I know. I was like, wait a minute, was it 2018? We, yeah. we had to have met before. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. Casey, okay. Mm -hmm. You know I got to start with Alabama. That's where it started. But before I even go there, how are you feeling right now? Oh, I'm just optimistic. I'm grateful. I am just filled with the most gratitude, you know, despite, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Despite mm -hmm. the valleys, despite mm -hmm. the ups and downs, I am, I choose gratitude. I love that. It's a choice and I choose it. I love that. I love that. I'm in that place too. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling really, really good. Yes, I mean, exactly. I'm feeling most good right now. Is that a word? Can I say most good? I'm yeah. feeling great. Yeah. Maybe that's it. You from Memphis. Because I'm sitting here with you. <laughs> Thank uh, you. But let's start with Alabama. So okay. you grew up in Alabama. Mm -hmm. There is a m mindset that happens in smaller cities. Yes. In terms of what's possible for you and what's not possible for you. Can you walk me through the journey mm -hmm. of the dream when mm -hmm. the dream started because it starts somewhere, somewhere right 100 where did your dream start it and then what was kind of that journey getting from alabama to actually like working for real in fashion music entertainment in new york Woo. i know it's a lot <laughs> it is, but I'm going to try to... No, go ahead. Take my time? I'm going to take, take my time. time. Take okay. your time. Take your time. Well, it started in the church. It started mm -hmm. in the church uh, with my grandma, who was head of pastor's aid. Mm -hmm. So her job, in the her role in the church was to ensure that um, our pastor had everything he needed. Mm -hmm. And so she was very, very, very committed to that. Mm -hmm. And... Um, she never wore the same thing twice. Like as a kid, I'm like, she took it very seriously. Right. You know, like right. her church wear was very serious. So as a child, I was raised by her. My mom is a missionary. She moved to Memphis to do missionary work. And she took my, my other brothers and sisters wanted to go with her, but I begged to stay with my grandma. I, I'm just a grandma's boy. Yeah. And so um, my grandmother was heavily involved in the church. And as a kid, she would take me with her to, to the garage sales and to the yard sales. <laughs> and she had this one place she went to called Cotton's. <laughs> <laughs> so Cotton's was a legendary spot in Inslee, Alabama that um, they sold the church hats. The, the, oh, the, why how did I know that? The white gloves, oh yeah, the white all, handkerchiefs. All, all I knew it. that that had to be what Cotton's was. So that's where she would go to get her Sunday looks. Like, okay. Th th those looks mattered the most. So as a kid, you know, I would just go run around in the store with her, get in trouble, knocking things over. But one day, it just clicked. And I was like, wait, I like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, <laughs> just touching things and actually becoming intrigued and interested. And when she noticed that, she nurtured it. 
Mm. And, um, you know, she would ask me what I, oh, what do you think about this? Which one should I wear? She would literally ask mm. me. So my grandmother was unknowingly my very first client as a kid. You know what's funny? This reminds me so much of Andre Leon Talley's oh, story. Oh, that is, he is my... When I learned of his existence, it was almost like I was watching me. I had a, wow. a, a literal reflection of where I came from, how I was inspired, the, the women that inspired me. Like, I, he is literally a, a reflection of me. Wow. He is, he is, he has paved the trail that I desire to walk. Did you ever meet him? Never got a chance to meet him. Wow. I have both his memoirs. I've watched all of his autobiographies and he, yeah, long live ALT. But yeah, my grandmother would, um, she nurtured it. You know, um, this is a silly fun fact, but I slept in the bed with my grandma until I was like 15. Wow. And we would lay in the bed together and watch Golden Girls, Designing Women. I mean, I would get in bed with my mom today. <laughs> and do How that. How about that? Exactly. <laughs> And you know, she back then we had um I think it was fashion TV where mm -hmm. the, the, the Roman yep. shows would yep. come on. Yep. She would let me watch that. She got me my first subscription to Ebony, to wow. Vogue. She she really allowed me to, you know, be creative and, and really go knee deep into it because we, we Alabama, Birmingham, yeah. it's a traditional place. You know, right. boys should be playing football. Right. You know, boys should be on the um, baseball, you know, whatever right. the case right. may be. Right. Those things were cool and I did it. I played outside, but right. ultimately I'm like, man, did my vote come today? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, what's up? Like, I'm trying to see what's cracking in the next issue. Right. You know what I'm saying? So she nurtured that. And through that, I just stayed with it. Mm. I stayed with it. And... I ended up going to college in Atlanta. I, I knew I wanted to go to an HBCU. So Where'd I, you go? Uh, Clark Atlanta University. Oh, we yes. work with Clark now. Okay. 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 Yeah, I went to Clark Atlanta University because they do have a um, really prestigious fashion department. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah, when I landed there, uh, I, I really thought that I would have had to like go off to New York or go mm -hmm. off to LA mm -hmm. or to Paris. But I'm so glad that I chose um, a HBCU to yeah. still keep me grounded and to still keep me um, immersed in our culture. I like I that. learned from us. Right, I learned right. the history of costume from us. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right. So um, by doing that, I uh, got into the Student Government Association. I was the freshman class president. And I was like, my first big thing I want to do is a fashion show. <laughs> I'm like, if people are like, what does it have to do with student affairs? I'm like, we all have to look. <laughs> We're going to figure it out. We're going right. we to figure out ways to right. make it work. But yeah, I met, through doing that, I met some of my lifelong friends that I'm still friends with today. And we're all work, we all mm -hmm. work as creatives in several different industries. And yeah, from Atlanta, well, from college, I started managing a clothing boutique. Mm -hmm. And I did that uh, with a uh, awesome lady. Her name is Dawn Harrell. She gave me an opportunity um, to manage a boutique. Had never worked in retail, mm -hmm. anything, but she just believed in my drive. Mm -hmm. And she believed in um, what she had seen me do, you know, at Clark Atlanta right. throughout the city. And I did that for maybe three years. And one day I woke up and was like, okay, glass ceiling what next so i had just moved into an apartment i had nothing but my clothes and the air mattress like it was mm. bare bones like i was literally getting getting it through the mud and i started well i also had a laptop okay so i started looking at opportunities in new york just Scrolling Craigslist. Mm -hmm. This was when Craigslist was the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm looking at Craigslist and I'm like, oh, these all look so great, but I'm not a New York Jesus. And I don't have no money. Like, I can't, I don't know what to do. So I started just applying for things, right. sending my resume to things. And no one was clapping back. And I'm like, I wonder why no one. So I realized my address. Had Atlanta. Was, had Atlanta on it. I, I, same thing happened to me. <laughs> same thing happened to me. Mm -hmm. I literally edited my resume mm -hmm. and put a random address in New York. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, they just started flowing in wow. the responses. So 
I got a response from um, this brand called Nicole Miller. I don't know if yeah, you're familiar. Of okay, yeah. Nicole Miller used to be. Yes, yeah. And Fashion Week was rolling up in like a week or so. Mm -hmm. And they were looking for extra hands mm -hmm. and interns and stuff to like help produce the show. And I'm like, oh my God, this is like what I desire mm -hmm. to do. Like, this is it. So they emailed me back and was like, yeah, this is like on a Tuesday. They were like, okay, we're doing interviews on Thursday. You know, can you make it? Of course. Right. Yes. Right. We'll be there. Now, dude, let me tell you something. <laughs> Casey, now I know. Robert, first of all, my first step after college was mm -hmm. Atlanta. Okay. And then I moved back to Memphis and then to New York. Okay. But same thing, I changed my address. And I was like, if somebody needs me to come on Thursday, I'm going to figure out how to get to New York. Man, let me tell you. Remember I mentioned how this was one of the first times that I, I heard, I felt God, I heard mm -hmm. him. After I responded to that email and told them that I would be there, like mm -hmm. confirmed it, I then said to myself, how am I going to make this happen? Mm. Mind you, I had just moved into that uh, apartment. I had just paid the, the down payment to move mm. in. I had just paid all of the um, um, utility, mm. um, you know, we got to pay uh, fees to get them yep. turned on. And yep. I'm like, okay, God, you know what I'm, what I'm in and you know what I desire to be, mm -hmm. des desire to do over here. So... I'm just sitting there. I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh God! And I just heard, swallow your pride. I just that was that was what mm. I heard. That was what I felt. Mm. <clears throat> and at the time, this was when Twitter was just taking off. And mm -hmm. they, at, back then, it wasn't called GoFundMe, but they had a app or some sort of website that people could donate to mm. you or donate to a cause. And mm -hmm. this and the third. So I literally put on my Twitter. I typed on my Twitter, I was like, I need $500 to make my dreams come true. Wow. I posted wow. it. And I was so nervous. I, I was just, you know how you swallow when you feel that? Yes. I was like, <laughs> I oh <do>. my God. <laughs> so I posted it, went and took a shower, you know, tried my best to stay away from the computer because right. I, did, I didn't want... Because you at this point, you probably got all kind of butterflies. Yeah. You're like, yeah. I didn't want nobody to feel, I didn't want nobody to feel like I was begging right. or, you know, I didn't know what anybody would say. Boom. I came back to the computer. It was five hundred dollars there. What? Actually, five hundred and twenty-five dollars there. What? So, boom. I said, "Okay, God, I see you." Wow. Like, wow. Then my phone ring. Mind you, it's like ten thirty, eleven o'clock at night. My phone rings. It's a client that I that shopped with me all the time at the boutique. She was like, "Hey," and she, you know, a little bit older than me. She was like, hey, I was like, hey. And she was like, um, yeah, um, you okay? And mm. I said, yeah. And she was like, are you sure? Like, she was like, I just woke up and you was just on my heart. Like, God just had me to call you. And I was like, what? And she was like, yes. She was like, are you okay? Mm. And I poured my heart out to her and I told her, I said, I just... It's a situation that I really want to attack in New right. York, and I don't have all the funds to like go and yeah. figure it out. And she was like, "Okay." She hung up the phone and booked my plane ticket. What? So in a matter of a couple of hours, I had what five hundred and twenty-five dollars in my account, and she paid for my flight to wow. New York. I left Atlanta that Thursday and never went back. What? That's how you moved to New York? That's how I moved to New York. I took, I left the air mattress. I took the clothes that I wanted. Because I knew, I was like, oh, if I get to New York, there's no way I'm leaving it. Wow. I flew there. I changed clothes in the airport bathroom. And I went straight from the airport to Nicole Miller. Wow. Then I, I had a couple of friends that already lived there. So for a couple of weeks, I was just like, from couch to right. floor, from floor to couch. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just right. like right. trying to figure it out. It was cold. Right. I, and you know what's crazy? You probably didn't have a proper coat. I bet I you didn't, didn't have a... What? I had like five <laughs> flannels that I put on every day. <laughs> you know, we don't have to have them in the song. No, song. no, uh, uh not at all. So I had to eventually, you know, get right. to that. But, right. you know, to this day, 
that apartment complex, I have never heard from again. They what? never they never emailed me or called me about rent or what happened or because I just left the apartment there. Wow. I said, okay, God. Right. Right. <clears throat> to this day. I hope they ain't watching and <laughs> I got to report you to collect. <laughs> I'm sorry. If if you hear, if you're watching, I'll we'll Look, figure it that out. That rent was probably less than a thousand dollars. Oh yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Back here, then. Here, here you go. Yeah. So okay. So you get to New York, mm -hmm. and I know that that was a struggle, right? 100%. Like just trying to make it and survive in New York, trying to figure out where you're gonna eat. Because it's a different pace. Where you gonna eat? You know, mm -hmm. you have the dollar pizzas on the corner. I'm That's sure you get a lot of that, on that, right? Yeah. How did you? What was your first big break in New York? My first big break, I got back on Craigslist mm. and I landed a internship at um, Albright Fashion Library. Mm. Are you familiar? Yeah, 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 yeah. Working under Irene Albright. Okay. Uh, I was the only black person there. Mm. Didn't even think I was going to get hired. Mm -hmm. I was so nervous, mm -hmm. but they believed in me and gave me a shot. Um... One day, I came in. It was storming outside, real bad. And I don't. Have you been to Albright in New York? I have. It's okay, been so a you, long time now. So when you go into Albright, mm -hmm. one side is the studio where yep. everyone goes in the racks. Yep. On the opposite side is where Irene lived. Ah. So it was it was like a a a, a, a central entrance. So when you come okay. straight in, if you go right, you into the studio. If you go okay. left, you're in her apartment. Okay. So they treated Irene like Oz. It was always like, you know. Don't. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah, yeah. It, it, they set it up like that. Yeah. So while working there in, or interning there, I was interning there making $10 a day. Speaking about the dollar pizzas, I would use, I would say. I just about to say $10 an hour. Mm -mm, a day. Wow. Okay. And they would give us that um, for lunch. I would save five to get wherever I was going on the train. Mm -hmm. And I would use the other five to eat a dollar pizza right, or a right, Snapple, you know, right. whatever I could get my hands on. So, I became accustomed to, like, not even looking that way when I went to work. Like, looking Irene's way, I would just come in, put my stuff down, mm -hmm. and, and get right in. But this particular day, <clears throat> it was storming. I had got wet. And I came in, and the door to her place was open. Mm. And when she heard me, like, taking my coat off, she was like, who is that? Like, mm -hmm. hey, like, who? And I'm like, oh my gosh, should I say anything? Mm -hmm. Should I keep? And I was like, hi, Miss Irene, it's Casey. And she was like, oh, Casey, I've heard a lot. Come you on. you went to New York calling everybody Miss and Mr. Mm -hmm. Two. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I've been doing the same thing for years. Mm -hmm. I'm just now finally dropping it. I, don't, I haven't even dropped it yet. People have to correct me. or be like, oh, it's okay. You can call yeah. me. She called me into her home. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my, I, I literally felt, I was like wobbling going in there like I'm walking up to Oz. Mm -hmm. And I walked in, she was a small, petite woman, just books everywhere and portraits. And, you know, she had a, um, you know, in the um, in castles when they have the bear with the head still on. Yep. She had one of those. Wow. I'm like, oh, my gosh. So I walk in and she was like, <clears throat> I've heard so much about you. You know, she was just thanking me for working so hard, um, you know, in the studio and, and this and the third. And I'm just like, of course, it's an honor, like. Being, just being immersed in the things that she had, the right. collections and stuff that she had was just amazing to me. So she was like, um, I'm going to um, flagships today. Would you, can you come with me? Mm. And I'm like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we, black car pull up. She takes me down. <clears throat> we get in the car. We hit Fifth Avenue. Chanel, Prada, um, uh, Bert, like all of the. Right. They all know her, so she goes in and does, um, she buys for the studio. Okay. From okay. these flagships. Okay. And, you know, she was like, you know, while we were riding there, she was like, you know, I, I want you to come with me because you, you're you the person who knows. Like, you know what mm. people come in wanting or you know how where, what we need. or right. You know what I'm saying? She right. was like, you man the floor, so I think this is a great opportunity for you. And I'm just sitting in that car like, can't believe it. Right. I'm like, this little black <laughs> So, uh -huh. we get to Bergdorf Goodman. Put a pin in that. Okay. When I first, one of the, like the first week I went to um, moved to New York or, you know, 
jump to New York. Right, right, right. You made it. I call it a cliff jump. Yeah. You made the cliff to, jump to, to New, New York. York. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bergdorf was the first place I went because, you know, they're they're known for their windows. I knew you just got the windows. And I yes. just wanted to see it with my own yeah. eyes. And I went. And when I tell you, I was afraid to touch the door handle. Mm. I didn't even want to go mm-hmm. in because I didn't want to be judged. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I didn't know what. I just felt like it was just too upper echelon yep. for me. I, I, let me, I totally relate to that. Because I used to just go to the Bergdorf's windows and just dream. Mm-hmm. I would literally sit out there for so long just looking at the windows and dream, but I would never go, go in. in. I would never go in. Yeah. And what's crazy is that 2021, I had this dream that Bergdorf's would help me do a window on 125th Street in Harlem. Oh my and I pitched that idea to Linda Fargo. Linda. And um, and they end up doing the windows for us Are on 125th serious? and 8th Street. Yes, Bergdorf Goodman's helped me do windows in Harlem. Oh, baby. <laughs> Talk about a dream, Chaser. You a dream I buster. I mean, it was that was that was a dream. So I know exactly on that, what baby. you mean. That's major. Yeah, that is major. So we pulled up to Bergdorf Goodman. Um, of course, all of these stores we go in through the back doors mm-hmm. or whatever. We pull up, and so. Um, Irene gets out on her side and goes in first before me. And then I get out and walk around the car to come in. And they, like, tried to stop me because they didn't know that I was with her. Oh, wow. And I was like, yeah, I'm with, you know, Miss mm-hmm. Albright or whatever. So she came back. She was like, don't you, like, literally, like, don't you ever stop. Like, mm. like so, and at that moment, I felt vouched for. Right. You know what I'm right, saying? Like, right, right. no, right. let him in. Right, He's with right, me. And right. I'm like, yeah, let me in. Right, right. <laughs> You know, just excited. Right, right. Um, and so we go in, they have it all laid out. It's beautiful. Um, that's how I met Linda Fargo in mm-hmm. this during this time. And I also met Stephanie was her name. Okay. Stephanie was her name. Uh she was like guiding us through the collections and where we where we were uh, there to look for. And at the end, uh, when we were nearing the end of wrapping everything up, she gave me a card. Stephanie gave me a card. And she was like, you know, just call me or email me if you ever need ever need anything. And I'm like, okay, you know, just happy to be getting a card from somebody uh-huh. at Bergdorf. <laughs> a good card. A good card. A good sturdy card. <laughs> Man, listen. And I was like, you know, okay, great. Amazing. Uh-huh. Let's do this. So, boom, I go back to Albright. Worked there through the summer, through the fall. Then that winter comes. Oof. I was like, oh, I don't know how long I can do ten dollars a day. Like, right, I, right. It was just becoming a thing, you know. Me, I had I, along the way meeting people who you know worked at hotels right. and who would let me in to sleep some nights, and you know it, it just became extremely. Trying tough. to figure out where you're gonna sleep every night is it's, stressful. What? Yeah. And don't let it get cold outside. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right, like right. when that when that winter came around, I was like, okay, this may be it. Right. So one day I had hit one of those points, and you know, mamas in the south, come on home, yeah. come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, mama, and I don't never like to call when I'm stressed out. I've never been the type to let my mama know because right. I'm just like, what you know? If anything, I'll send her a text and be like, just pray for me, mama. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right, Even right. though I know she always is, like right, I right. just like to put a little mm, a on special it. one, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And she was like, "Just come on home, baby. Just come on home." And I'm a, I'm considering. I'm looking at flights. Right. I'm like, "All right," because at this point, right, I'm sitting across the street in a Starbucks that's at near Astor Place, where mm-hmm. that's yep. where the showroom yep. was, and. I pull my laptop out to look at plane tickets, and I, when I pull my laptop out, guess what fell out of it? The card. The card. Wow. Stephanie's card. And I emailed her. I was like, I don't even know if this lady is still there. Mm-hmm. But I emailed her, mm. and she immediately responded. Wow. And was like, oh, hi. Like, great to hear from you. I'm glad to hear, you know, you're still with Albright this and the third. And I told her, I was like, look, Stephanie, I've been busting my butt. At mm. all, at all, bright intern in this last year, and I just need a real opportunity. I'm trying to figure out my life. Yeah, I'm trying to. F- I, I need to. F- I need somewhere to sleep. Like mm-hmm. I, I need a foundation. And mm-hmm. she was like, "Come see me." So the next day, I went up to Bergdorf to see her. She introduced me to this guy named Mark, mm-hmm. who worked in um, went, um, studio not studio service, but um, client services. Mm-hmm. It was on the sixth floor of Bergdorf. 
and we interviewed and they hired me. I went from $10 a day to make it 15 an hour. Mm. And that allowed me to like rent room, like, you know, right, right. I was able to just, right. and yeah. And through that job, that was a breakthrough. Right, I know you asked right, about a breakthrough. Right, right. That was a breakthrough. And through that job is how I just started meeting people. Right. And one of those people was, is Ethiopia Haptomerium, mm. who has been my, she is the reason mm -hmm. that I am here. Wow. Wow. So, first of all, it's crazy because you go from like being afraid to even walk in Bergdorf's Baby, and, and to actually cutting up the walls, <laughs> Be beating down the walls, people coming in looking for me. Wow. To actually killing it at Bergdorf's. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a whole moment in itself. Was there any point during that experience that you were like, I think I want to style people? Like, was that a thing? Was that a thought at that moment? Oh, absolutely. Mind you, I worked in um, client actually, services. Because you were kind of doing that the whole time, right? I was. I was. I was assisting, okay. you know, um, in, in, in helping uh, um, at that time, like a lot of editorial stylists. Because okay. okay. that's what Albright serviced a lot of uh, editorials and okay. publications. So okay. a lot of editors would come in and get stuff. Okay. And I would assist when they would need help. Yep. Um, but being at Bergdorf was my my chance to mm -hmm. show my skills because right. working in the department I worked in, we they people came to us when they had issues. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I want to return this, don't have a receipt, or oh, I need to find a receipt for this, or oh, I bought this online and want to, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. I dealt with people like that a lot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I did start having conversations with women who would come in and be like. Oh, I'm returning this because I don't really know what to do with it. Like, I don't, mm. I'll be like, girl, you should just go over there and, you know, it, those type right. of conversations would happen. So as people realized that they would thank me and the next time they came in, they would always come see me and be mm. like, oh, I need, I'm doing this. Can you help? You know, it turned right. into that. I wasn't a salesman, like, or a wow. salesperson. I just worked right. in the office area. Right. But when they would come in, I would literally leave out of my office and go walk the floor with them. Wow. And it developed like that. Right, like I, that right. was my chance to really show um, the keenness or the creativity right. that I possessed. And women started trusting me. There is a, my mom always talks about this, your gift will make room for you. It's mm -hmm. a verse that says that. Mm -hmm. And like, even though you were in a whole different department, your gift couldn't hide. It couldn't. Like, the gift That's was crazy. there. That's crazy. Now right? that you say that, yeah. Like, it couldn't hide. Like, because it was just there. And when you came in, I was saying to you, and, and I'm going to have you speak a little bit more about this, but mm -hmm. um, when I see the people that you style, <clears throat> their transformation isn't just what they look like. Like, mm -hmm. it's not like, oh, they went from dressing like this to dressing like that, right? Mm -hmm. When I see the clients that you dress, which, by the way, I'm about to make you name drop, so get ready. Oh, God. Um, but when I see the clients that you dressed, it almost feels like there's this transformation that's happened from the inside out. And that is, is rare. You know what I mean? And so there's something there, even like back then when you read Bergdorf's, those <laughs> women felt it, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's so, where I start. I start yeah. from the inside out because... I care. Right. I, I care about people in general, but I, I really care about my clients and the people that I'm around and that I create with and that I work with. Do you know what I see when, I, when you just said that? What? Your grandmother being a pastor's aide. She cared. Wow. She cared. Wow. N like, and even in the community, would feed the block. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, it was, it, it's, she, she, Literally led by example, like I literally looked at her and how she handled things and people and situations and was like, oh, OK, that's how you that's she how we really doing it. Yeah. yeah, she really cared. And, yeah. and it, it literally seeped into me. Yeah. So when I when I get with people or with clients, I start with them. I want to I want to know you. I want to feel mm. you like I, again, I can put clothes on anyone. Anyone could put clothes on. anyone. Right. Right. But. What does it mean if 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 what's inside 
ain't yeah. you know what I'm saying? Don't look as good as what we're looking at externally. What's some of the questions you ask <clears throat> when you meet with a client? When you first, when you first, first, first meet a client, I ask them to send me words. Mm. Send me words of how you feel, and send me words of how you want to feel. Wow. Like I want to know. I want to know those things. Like I want to know where you at, and where you want to be. Wow. So I can meet, you know, I can meet you have, I, I can get in there. You know what I'm saying? Take a table, I mean, a teaspoon of what you got going on, bring a tablespoon of what I got going on. <laughs> I'm going to call you a transformational stylist. Mm, I like that. <laughs> How about that? How about that? I like that. So, okay. <clears throat> so, first of all, the fact mm -hmm. that you've styled, like, one of my, actually, my absolute favorite artists in the world. Oh, wow. Tony Braxton. <laughs> Uh, yeah, shortcut. Which, which, by the way, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, when I turn 50, I want Tony Brad. I'm just saying this. I'm saying this on the show. I want her to sing at my 50th birthday party. It's possible. Uh, but anything. The possible. fact that you, you know, you style her, I was like, ah. but why don't we talk about it? just, just rattle off, just maybe 10 names. 10? 10. I don't even know names. if I got 10. You got 10. Oh of my people gosh. that you style that okay. you're like, wow, that was a oh, moment. I might have that was a moment. You just, got to it. Just Come on now. Okay, so let's start off with this. Everyone knows I love Beyonce. However, I've worked with every member of Destiny's Child except her. Wow. Every member. I've had mm. a chance to style. That's Latoya. That's Latavia, that's Kelly, that's Michelle. Wow. The incredible Savannah James. Oh my gosh. When I tell you that Savannah is out in these streets looking like a full-on grown woman who is owning her stuff, like, I love to see it. Every time I see <clears throat> her and her style and her stepping out, I'm just like, girl, yes. We all been waiting for this. She is really owning it. She's owning and it. And I'm so proud of the strides that she's taken as a woman, as a human. Yes. You know, as a creative, because she is naturally a creative as well. Um, Chica. Chica. <laughs> Look, I'm about to help you name I know. drop. I see. <laughs> um, Janae Aiko. Yeah. My fairy princess, Amber Riley. Yes. Incredible singer yes. and actress. Emil, Nico Anand, incredible yeah. actor, um, Uncle Clifford from P Valley, for those for y'all yes. who don't know. Yes. Incredible actor. That's and then nine. you did the commercial. What was the commercial for? Was it Facebook? What who did you do a commercial for? Oh, that was with Chica. Okay. Yeah, okay. That was okay. with Chica. Okay. Um, What's the artist that you haven't worked with yet that you're like, this is it. I, this uh, is the one I want. Go on and say it. Come on, spill the beans. Um <laughs> You know you have to speak these I know things. things. Yeah, yeah. I am a I don't want to say retired member of the Beehive, but <laughs> I've gotten better with my duties <laughs> as a Beehive member. Uh, I sit on the executive board, so you know. Yes. I, you know I don't. Yes. I don't be buzzing around. Yeah, like you, let, you let them do you that. Let you them, let yeah, them do the yeah. buzz. <laughs> but it would be a moment. Yeah. Uh, a God-given moment and a God-given opportunity to work in any capacity with Beyonce. She's so epic. Yeah. I mean, it's just Beyonce. She is epic. I just need one shot. <laughs> I love it. She's going to see this. She's going to see this and be like, let me reach out to Icon. Let me I hope so. To I hope so. Um, She's just incredible. You are in this place where your career is fully thriving like you are make I, like i can see it everyone sees it mm -hmm. i see the comments on your social media <laughs> icon tips um but everyone sees it like it feels like you're literally in your prime mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like that to you no because i'm in it mm -hmm. i don't all the time see what everyone else does. Mm -hmm. um, I just recently went to Paris for um, Couture Week. That was my first time. It's always been a dream of mine to attend a couture show. And it's always been a dream. Since I've known of Scaparelli, the house, um, it's been a dream of mine to attend their shows. I've watched them online every season. 
like enamored. Mm -hmm. And I had my, I got an invite to their show in Paris. Mm. In that moment, I felt like I was a part. Mm. Just in fashion. Mm -hmm. I, I felt, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this is Scaparelli. Right. I'm walking these infamous steps alongside Miss Savannah. So that was your mother, motherland drip moment. Yes, it was extremely from the from the root of mm. motherland. I had on an African brand. What was the name of the brand? Um, Kamzi T. Charles. Okay. Incredible okay. designer from Africa, Nigeria, and Savannah was in, of course in Scaparelli. But I wanted to put on for my people. Yes. I wanted to make sure we were seen mm. in that moment um, because I knew. Just personally, it was monumental for me. Mm. And all of my peers and people that I'm close to and my friends, you know, just know how much art and couture means to me. Right. And to be able to, to, be able to attend that show in that moment with her, mm. it just, it was so full circle. And that, I felt, that moment I felt seen. I felt mm. a part. Mm. I really felt a part. And that's so interesting because I think a lot of us feel that. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of black people who work in fashion, you are a lot of times, and I hear this from designers all the time, I just want to feel seen. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm seen. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody knows who I am. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got all these articles and all these things, but I just still don't feel a part. Mm -hmm. So I know that that felt like a moment for you. It did. It did. And I'm grateful, mm -hmm. honestly. <laughs> to um, have Scaparelli, you know, embrace me how they did. Yeah. We did dinners. You know, I went to see this collection privately. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, they, they have that's really... That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That's why I asked. Like, do you feel like you're in that moment? Or do yeah. you feel like... I mean... I've I, got bigger moments coming. Yes. I, I, I do feel like I have um, more man hours to log. Mm. And I'm equipping myself for that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I I, I I do feel like bigger is coming and mm -hmm. bigger is out there. Mm -hmm. That was just my first, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've done a lot mm -hmm. and been blessed to do a lot. Mm -hmm. But that moment was, it's like, okay, he's a Scaparelli. Mm -hmm. So why is he not there? You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, so right, 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 that, right. That's right. my mindset. I don't know if it'll play out like right, that. Right. I'm praying that it does, but yeah. What advice, because I'm sure you get hit up a whole lot, like mm -hmm. what advice do you have for aspiring stylists? Start. Mm. Start. Again, I'm a black boy, man from Alabama, and I, limited resources, all I had was my imagination. You know what I'm saying? And had I not expressed that imagination to my grandma who you know, was already into style and creativity, who knows what I would have ended up doing in the NFL, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, a med student, I anything could have happened, but because I expressed myself and I started, that was right. that's a form of starting. Right, right. Um, and, and eventually, if you are in a smaller city or in a smaller town, your wings will outgrow it. Yeah. And you'll know when it's time to bust out of that cage because the wings won't be able to stay in it. Yeah. You feel it. You feel you it. You absolutely feel it. Yeah. What's um one piece of, because you also are a business owner. Mm hmm What's one piece of entrepreneurial advice you would give? Ooh. What do you wish you knew? <laughs> oh, the, literally the same. I procrastinated so long around that. Mm. And... Because it's one of those things where you can psych yourself out because you don't know how people will receive it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you have to get out of your own head with creativity. You mm -hmm. have to literally water it and let it do what it do. Mm -hmm. Is there a book, a podcast, a sermon, like Ooh. something that like you share all the time with people? Well, right now I'm, I'm reading a book I just I talked to you about earlier. It's called Conversations with God. I urge everyone who who yearns to be aligned, who yearns to know what God feels like and sounds like, he communicates to us via feeling. And I'm learning that through this book. So if you desire to um, get aligned with those things and understand where God is coming from, you should get that book. It's called Conversations with God. I have got, I'm going to get it. I do yes. Audible. So anytime okay. I say I'm reading, I'm mm -hmm. listening. You're just listening. Okay. Um, but I'm definitely going to check that out. 
Please do. When you think about what's next for you, mm -hmm. like, where do you want to go? Like, are you comfortable sharing that dream yeah. with us? Okay. Um, it's a couple of things that I have been intrigued by. Um, I have started script writing. Mm. Like, I, I, so everything starts in the imagination. Right, you right, know, styling, right, any, right, any, right, anything, designing. Right. It all starts in the imagination. Yeah. And I watch a lot of documentaries. Yeah. I, I like to learn about a lot of things. I like to learn about things, any, even historic things that have happened in the past. I'm like, ooh, I want to research and see how it started, why mm -hmm. it started. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So I'm always looking at things from the origin and there are just ideas that um, I want to see in the world. And, or I'm looking at a movie and I'm like, oh, it could have ended like this. It's mm. like, well, oh, that's original. It's not in the world. So why don't you, right, you know? Right. So I was talking to my best friend and who's also helps me as an agent. Um, and we've been friends since Clark Atlanta. She, she worked with, we became friends working on our very first fashion show together. And um, I, got with her and we started developing a script. So I've been doing that. Mm. I'm also interested in costume design for films. Yeah. I'm also interested in starting my own cut and sew line. I love it. I'm also interested in music. You know what I love is when you take the limits off and you're just like, what I hear from you mm -hmm. <clears throat> is that you actually allow yourself to dream. Yeah. Right, because sometimes your success can almost feel like a cage at times. Ooh. You're right, because this is what people know me for. This is what people know I do, you know. But what I'm hearing is that you're actually in this place where you're allowing yourself, like your curiosity, mm -hmm. to to drive you. Yes, because, and I mean this in the most soft and honest way possible. I'm grateful for styling. I'm grateful for having the opportunity to work with all of the amazing individuals that I have. But I do know that there is more to my life than yeah. putting clothes on people. Yeah. I just know that. Yeah. And I'm becoming more comfortable with knowing that. Yeah. I used to be like, oh no, this is all I'm doing. Because like, mm -mm. <laughs> this was a dream. This was a dream. Right. This was a dream. And, and, and here's what nobody says. Okay, when you've got the dream and you've achieved the dream, then what? Exactly. Exactly. And I got to my then what? Right. I got to my then what, and it was uncomfortable. And, you know, just talking to people that I love and, not, and that I trust and that will be honest with me, um, I was able to figure out those other things that I just kind of dropped. Yep. Um, so, yeah. And, I, and, and one by one, I have been chipping away at them, just trying to figure out stances in them. Yep. So... I'm praying that God continues to lead me and show me the way and align me with the right souls and right. energies right. To, to, to bring them to life. I love that. Who are three black designers Ooh. that everyone who's watching this right now mm -hmm. should check out and shop from? Uh, so first off, <laughs> I just want to give a, uh, I just want to pour some love into uh, this person who has literally poured into me since we've known each other and he has become a staple in fashion not just black fashion but just fashion in general um sergio hudson yes sergio his point of view his know-how his wit his love for blackness and black women and chicness and boldness and big hair and 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 vava he just it, you know yeah. but he he interprets it and, and he and he creates it and, and he finesses it to yeah. have this suaveness about it you yeah. know what i mean like he takes every element of banji mm. we know what banji yep, is yep. and makes it this wearable art yeah and when you when i wear sergio hudson mm -hmm. I can't explain it, but I feel so powerful. Yes, it's in the shoulders. It's in the shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> you saw me do yeah, it. Yeah, uh huh. It's in the shoulders, baby. He gonna give us a powerful shoulder. Oh. He's gonna make sure that torso and that waist is defined. Yep. You know what I mean. Yep. He's just gonna make you walk tall. Yep. And I love that he's brought that element to women. Yeah, I love it too. Incredible. So yes, Sergio, first on my list. I love you, brother. Number two. 
I would probably have to say Christopher John Rogers. Oh, yes. What he's managed to do in the art space is extremely colorful. Yeah. Is bright, is vibrant, is audacious. Yeah. You know, and he he really does paint a well muraled picture for um creativity and, yeah. and, and, and for people who dare to jump. You yeah. know, it's yeah. very it's a very daring yes. Thing that he does, so I, I appreciate that from him. And I have to shout out my brand from Nigeria, Kamzi T. Charles again. Yeah, what he does for menswear, what he does for different body types, is sculptural. Um, and mind you, I've never met him in my life. Wow, we've only done things virtually. Wow, I've only literally sent him my sizes and just pictures of me, and he does it. He does it, ships it from Nigeria. I put it on and literally be out the door. Wow. That's so, so crazy. He's incredible. I love it. So, Icon, one last, like, what's a statement, a quote? We're going to end on this. Mm -hmm. Something that literally, like, it's the thing that sustained you. When I first went off to college, and um, I have a twin sister, so I originally you know mm -hmm, I have a twin sister. She's an athlete. And uh, we were originally supposed to go because she was uh, courted by uh, University of Houston. Mm -hmm. So we were originally supposed to go to school in the same city. And I was like, you know what? We've been together all our lives mm -hmm. for the most part. So I'm going to go. And, and then um, the school that I wanted to go to down there didn't have a fashion program. So mm -hmm. I'm like, OK, yeah, I'm going to just go over here. But we ended up splitting ways. And she went to Houston. I went to Clark Atlanta. And my mom was kind of like, sad about it because she wanted mm -hmm. her kids all in the same place. I'm like, it's going to be all good. It's going to be cool. So, um, I remember the day the, the I left and the next morning my mama texted me and was like, you know, um, you know, I'm super proud of you. I'm, you know, I'm praying. I pray everything is good. We'll be good for you. And she ended it with no loss but restoration. Mm. And what does that mean to you? I texted her and I asked her, I was like, well, you know, what is that? She was like, son, you know, you're moving into a new realm of living. And I want you to know that you will never accept any loss, but all restoration. Wow. Everything is restorative. Wow. Wow. And from that day on, I would tweet that every single day. Like, that would be the first thing I tweeted every morning. Wow. And people started retweeting it. And then, you know, asking me, oh, what does it mean? What does it mean? And I would just tell them what my mom said. Right, right. And it just became a thing. Your 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 Instagram is super inspirational. Like, when you read the post, it's mm -hmm. like, okay, I can do anything looking at this. And that's my goal. Yeah. I want everyone to know to that you, like yeah, you don't have, there's no loss. There's no loss. There's no loss. Everything is restorative. Any mistake that you've made, anything that you've done, any slip up, mm -hmm. any, any mishap, any... Any darkness that you face, you know what I'm saying? Beyond yeah. that, it's the restorative. I it's the restoration. That. And, I, you know, I also t I want to urge people to, like, you know, change your prayer up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Don't always, you don't have to always say the same prayer. You know what I'm saying? Because the mountains will never stop forming. Mm -hmm. We just need the agility and the strength to just always get over them. Always climb them. Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> I live in a church and that, okay? <laughs> that's what it is. That's that's who I am. It's really who I am and I and I and it's really a part of the reason why you know, I feel that, you know, God has blessed me. And I'm super grateful. I I'm super grateful to have been able to have this conversation with you. Me too. Um it has been I mean, my heart is full, my spirit is full. Mine too. I'm feeling so good. Like Thank you so, You're so very much. You're so, so very of course, welcome. I got to give you a fashion and color book. Yes. And but I'm even so glad before I do one. that, mm -hmm. I want to walk you through four rapid fire questions. Rapid fire questions. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. To dress up or dress down? Dress down. Night owl or early bird? Night owl. Text or call? Text. Coffee or tea? <laughs> Ice coffee. <laughs> Sweet or salty? Ooh. We can't get a mix of that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I would say salty. 
I love it. I would say salty. Thank if I had you. to choose. Thank you. <laughs> this is yours. Thank you so much. <laughs> Such Thank an honor to have a book. Thank you. Y'all see this? <laughs> Thank Fashion you so much for being on the show. You're like so today has been amazing. It's been, and now we're friends, yeah, by the way. You are kind of stuck with me. You like my cousin. You know <laughs> exactly. exactly. We, know, we know somebody who knows somebody. I Thank you that. so much for listening to this episode of the Fashion and Color Podcast. I want to thank our production partner, PVA Entertainment. The Harlem's Fashion Row team, thank you so much for your support of Harlem's Fashion Row and for your support of designers of color. Please be sure to leave us a five-star rating on your favorite podcast platform and be sure to share this with a friend. Welcome to the HFR movement.